everybody. We've got Brian here. Going to get started with this skills challenge. We've got a lot of folks international today, which is awesome. Challenges. Right, London. Mexico. Hopefully everybody on the East Coast, up north. Not getting too much smoke. Come on, Swapna. We'll get started here in a bit. Hi, Maria. Wow, a couple people from my man already. Love it. All right, everybody. Welcome to this skills challenge. Uh, for those of you who are coming into your, this is the first time you've done a skills challenge, I'm going to do a quick little emoji poll and get you guys going. Go to that emoji that you see on the bottom and maybe hit the wow button. If this is your first time at the skills challenge, always love to welcome the newcomers. Looks like we've got one or two. Awesome. And I know, all right, we've got a couple bits. I know because Akansha has already raised her hand, knows how this works. Everybody, we're super excited to welcome Brian, along with Joe Brian, our Golden Hoodie recipient, star of the show for today. Brian, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to all the learners who may not have met you before? Sure. Uh, so, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where everybody is. My name is Brian Owens. As you can see on the screen, I am a product manager at NBC Universal, working with their ad sales division. Um, I love reporting. I love everything about it. Um, it's really kind of how I made a name for myself in the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, and I'm also a Golden Hoodie recipient, and I'm looking forward to just seeing all the great work that you all do and give you some valuable feedback. Awesome. Love it. And Brian, do you want to kind of like talk about how you got into uh, Salesforce? And I know we've got a lot of career switchers, just kind of like your journey for those who, who don't know it. Sure. Um, so for those of you who haven't heard my story. Um, I originally came in the sales force from sales and retail. I worked a lot of retail jobs um, and I was a financial advisor. So I have over eight years of experience in the financial services industry, life insurance, health insurance, uh, everything with investments you can think about. I know it, I've learned it, I've gotten certified in it. Um, I really got burnt out on being in sales the long hours, not making the money that I really felt like me and my family deserved. Um, so I decided to make the switch and get in the sales force. Um, my first job was actually at Regions Bank. So it's a bank here in the Southeast. Um, and I was a business analyst there. And like I mentioned earlier, reporting is really where I made a name for myself. Um, for anybody who's kind of looking to transition into this space, reporting is a great place to really kind of um, yeah, I guess kind of expand your skill set and really be able to provide a lot of value to your customers. Because if you think about it from any executive standpoint, any sales leadership, uh, they're worried about what the numbers look like. They're not in the system every day. They want to know how much did my people sell? How much money did we make this quarter over what we made last quarter? And reporting is the place they go to find those answers. So you become really good friends with them and you can figure out how to pull a report in five minutes. <laughs> awesome. Love it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. You know, I was always the data guy on the other side of advertising, Brian. So I also love this topic. So I'm glad we get a power about it. Everybody, this is the agenda. For those of you who haven't been through one of this, this is how this experience is going to work, at least from a time perspective. We'll talk about how it's going to work from a logistics perspective in a bit, but we're going to give you a quick little overview of goals, rules, how we do things at Clicked, and the actual experience details and the task. Most of you have probably already seen it in the LMS, which is the app.click.com where the information lives, but we're going to go through it again. And then Brian is going to give you some tips and tricks for how to kind of approach this challenge. And we're going to talk about a report metrics, dashboards, all that stuff. And then we're going to start the challenge. So for those of you who have done this beforehand, awesome. What we started doing, you know, for a lot of you, you know, click for starting, let you guys do it beforehand. We're going to bring you up on stage so we can get more people feedback. 
for those of you who want to do the challenge live, you'll have about 20 minutes or throughout the experience to be able to get your hands dirty, get hands on keyboards and test the waters with this particular task. And we'll use all of the remaining time for some feedback and Q and A. If at any point in time you do have a question, you can put it in that Q and A section in Airmeet that is preferred. Or if you post in the chat, I probably won't lose it. I'll probably see it and we'll get to it. But Q&A section is definitely preferred. Awesome. So for those of you who have new, this are core, uh, these are our clicked core principles. For those of you who have been here before, you kind of know this. For the newbies, know that we all get to learn from each other. So all the insights and key learnings from this experience are going to be co-created through discussion and feedback. This is not a lecture. Every single time we do this experience, you'll get some unique insights. It is different every time. And we are focused on getting people up on stage, sharing the work, and don't be afraid to. There is no judging here. There's no grades. There's no scores. If you've got scribble on a piece of paper, usually gets you a hoodie. <laughs> um, so hop on up with whatever you are at because it contributes to the conversation. We all get to learn from it. And throughout this, keep those emojis going. Have some fun. This is a time for us all to learn and have some fun together throughout the experience. So with that, I'm going to jump into the scenario and tasks that we're going to go through today in this Developing Reporting Metrics and KPIs Skills Challenge. So here is the scenario. So in this scenario, you all are going to take on the role of a Salesforce business analyst working with who? The World Health Organization, not who the world organization to streamline their grant management processes realize we probably should have put the full name there instead of the acronym right off the bat but the world health organization needs to improve efficiency enhance their grant approval processes capabilities but their current uh their current tools to create data accuracy are, or their but their current tools create data accuracy and reporting problems your new team will be working to improve this process so your goal is to develop some reporting metrics and KPIs to the WHO so that they can streamline, streamline their grant management process, improve data accuracy, and enhance their reporting capabilities. This is going to allow you to assist with implementing a solution for their global health initiative. So we have previously done an interview, and we have included interview notes here for everyone to leverage and use for this task. I'm realizing that probably says edit when it should need to say share. So let me know if you guys can actually access that link. Um, first and foremost, if you can't, I'll, we'll open it up. But this is the task. So we want you to create a presentation uh, to this stakeholder of what data they want to visualize for the stakeholder in preparation for building a report and dashboard. So think about this as awesome. Good to see the thumbs up. Think about this as the step before you actually create reports and dashboards. So this is what we want you to do. Start by identifying the key data points that Santiago needs visibility into. Determine the best way to present the data and consider any potential challenges or barriers that may arise when building the reports. And we want the presentation to be clear uh, how this will help streamline their grant management process, improve data accuracy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So all of this has been written down. We will go through this in a bit, but Brian, any quick tips for the learners who are going to go through this experience live um, in terms of this particular scenario, thinking about KPIs uh, and the reporting metrics? Yeah. Um... I say my advice for working on reports and dashboards in Salesforce. I know you can do a lot of fancy charts, um, do a lot of things with the colors, but what I always say is the quality of the data and the type of insights that your user can pull from it is more important than how pretty it is. You know, um, we'll probably see some today where you can change colors and I can kind of give you out some links if you want to figure out how to change the colors and the themes within the dashboard, but really the data in there is more important. Um, the second concept I always keep in mind with creating dashboards, especially if you don't have a template to come uh, to start with, is a concept called progressive disclosure. It's kind of used a lot in the user experience area. It basically means give people a high level view of the information you're showing and then give them a way to click into it or to open it up further if they want to get down into the weeds. So with all Salesforce dashboards, the components you have in there, there's a link down at the bottom where you can actually open up the charts. And 
thing that I love to do is I may have one chart on the actual dashboard, um, let's say like a donut chart or a pie chart. And then when you click into the actual report, it'll give you a totally different chart. So I may shift to doing it as a bar chart or something different just to kind of give people multiple ways to look into that, look at the data. Um, and then that gives them an opportunity to kind of dive in further. Also, again, if you don't have, oh, hey, Tiana. Um, if you don't have, like I said, a template again, um, my two things that I always try to look for is number one is ROI, return on investment. Um, executives and leadership always love to see that because Salesforce licenses are not cheap if you don't already know. Um, so especially if you're working in a sales operations role like I always have, um, you wanna be able to show the revenue that's generated and you wanna be able to give people a quick view at the revenue that's being generated. The second one, and it was in the challenge note, it talks about efficiency. Efficiency from a reporting standpoint always has to do with activity. Are we doing more things today than we were doing before we had Salesforce? Are we closing deals faster? Um, if you're in a service organization, have we decreased the amount of time it takes for us to close a case? So those are the two things that I kind of, I guess are the foundation of every dashboard I build is revenue that's being generated and then activity that's been being generated. Mm -hmm. And I think Brian, like even, even going back to kind of just like the general whys with these dashboards already exist, which I think is in the prompt and what you're alluding to. But even before like we get into the, the folks who would say, and, and for this challenge, if you guys did dashboards, visualizations, awesome, not expected thinking about like, what is all the details or the information that goes into it, Brian? Like, how do you make sure that you're talking with a client and says, this is the, these are the metrics I want to see and making sure they, you know, just creating alignment with the stakeholder. Like, how do you create alignment with all the different dimensions and filters and pieces of data to before, before actually building? Um, so I kind of do that with, I guess, kind of like a wireframing. Um, but you always use your stakeholder interviews as an opportunity to get feedback. Um, because whatever you're thinking, it's probably going to be a little bit different than what they're thinking. But you want to ask those type of questions. You want to ask when you're when you're thinking about your grant management process, do we need to see this broken down by the representative or the agent that's working on it? Or do we need to see this broken down by the actual company? Um, do you wanna see them grouped together by revenue amount? So do you wanna see all the grants that's less than 500,000 um, or over 500,000? So just asking those questions so you have an idea of kind of how they wanna see the data put together because once you have all the information, you can tell whatever story you want to with it. Awesome, love it. So with that, everybody, me, we are going to go ahead and get the timer started. So we're gonna set 20 minutes here. Uh, me and Brian are gonna do a little bit of witty banner, but I know some of you have already done this. In fact, Akanksha and Sanisha, you have already raised your hand, which is great. If you have already done the work, go ahead, raise your hand, hop into the queue. We wanna see everybody's work who's gone through it. Um, and we'll make sure that we can fly through everybody else. Um, for everybody else who is going to work on a session, we definitely always recommend you get some hands-on experience. So give this task a try. We're going to go back and forth between the task and the scenario. So you have this information. And again, if you've got any questions at any point in time, just let me know. We'll go back and forth. Uh, so Brian, my, and if you want to go through this and you don't want to listen to me and Brian chat, just go on mute. <laughs> hide in the back room or come back in 10 to 15 minutes uh so you can you can kind of get in the pocket and maybe get into a little flow state uh but brian i want to I, I love asking these questions whenever it comes to dashboards what does a bad dashboard look like and what does it include a bad dashboard includes not identifying the right kpis or um putting trying to create reports and you don't have the right information in there. So like you might have a report and it just re returns like very limited numbers because you didn't do the right type of filter. Um, and I would say a bad dashboard is using all the same type of charts. So you have a lot of different flexibility in there. Um, everybody has their favorites, but if it looks all the same, it's hard to kind of quickly present it definitely to somebody, but also when they're looking at it without you, 
going to be hard for them to say like, okay, well, what's this one and what's this one? So variety in there um, and just making sure you have the right report criteria set up. Awesome. Um, and let's talk into like the different types of charts, right? The way that you talked about like flipping back and through to make sure that it's visual. Like, do you have any best practices or ways that you do it outside of flipping when say a specific chart is better than a different one from a visualization perspective? Uh, yes. So my two favorite charts are the donut chart. It's, I guess let me back up. So for doing anything pipeline related. So in, in our scenario today, it's about a grant management process, which is essentially a pipeline. You, were, you wanna see where different grants are throughout this pipe, uh, throughout this process. So for those, I love doing either a funnel chart or a donut chart. Um, I tend to go a little bit more towards the donut charts, which is essentially a pie chart with just a zero in the middle or a space in the middle. I like that one because it gives you the total number in the little space in the middle. Um, also, I like the funnel charts because you start with kind of the, the big portion of the funnel and it obviously gets smaller. Um, so those are the two favorites that I like to use. And then if you're doing anything category wise, so let's say that Santiago, for example, wanted to group uh, group the grants together by the different industries of the organization. Stack bar charts are a great way to do that because it conserves space. So let's say, for example, you had 10 grants that were in healthcare, 10 grants that were in education, 10 that were just I guess the pure nonprofit space. You can have that all in one chart or all in one column. Um, and you can save a lot of space and it gives you a good visualization of whatever category you're trying to show. Awesome. Cool. Good deal. Uh, so we're going to quickly publish a quick poll because I want to see who's actually working on this. I know we've got a couple people with their hands raised already. So I know the answer to at least two of those. But who's going to be working on this poll during the session? Who's just going to be watching today? Love to know where we're kind of at with everybody. We got 63 people in the session. All right. Awesome. All answers are right answers, as we mentioned already. All right. Awesome. Lots of people watching today. <laughs> Go ahead and get those hands dirty if you feel like it. All right, cool. So we've got like five people actively working on it. Um, so Brian, any, as you were like going through the scenario, I know briefly, um, was there anything standing out that you thought would be maybe a, I don't want to give away the answer a little bit. I know there's no right <laughs> answer here, but anything that like struck, struck a particular chord with you were like, I would probably dive into this a little bit more. Um. I definitely started to, in the scenario where it talked about just the data accuracy, um, that's something I guess that I deal with a lot. So in Salesforce, there's a concept called adoption, I guess it's with every kind of tech tool, but you want to make sure that you're getting good information in, because from a reporting standpoint, you can only create reports that are the quality of the data that you have within Salesforce will determine the quality of the reports you're able to create. So bad data in, bad data out is kind of the cliche saying that everybody makes. So if they're having data problems, um, while that isn't something I guess you would you would do from a, a reporting standpoint, um, it is something I want to kind of dig into. So maybe I partner up with the admin or if I'm working for a consulting company and I have an admin that I'm working with, that's going to be something that we're talking about. Um, because like I said, I can't create a report if I don't have the information. Um, another thing that I started thinking about was just showing, um, showing the volume that they had, because that's going to be really important. Um, I thought about the, the groupings of how we would want to do the category grouping, like with a stack bar chart. Um, another aspect of this is they said that they did not want to increase their team. Size. So they wanted to increase the volume of grants that they were working on, but they didn't want to increase the team size. One thing I'm potentially worried about with that is, okay, if you're going to increase your volume, I think it was three times the amount of grants over the next five years, um, if you're going to be increasing your volume that much, 
how are we making sure that we're building Salesforce in a way to help your people work faster? And also from a, I guess, a leadership perspective, I would get them to be aware of this kind of burnout of their people because you're asking people to do essentially three times the work for probably not three times the money. Um, so you want to make sure that you're not burning them out. So having, having a pulse on how many cases or how many grants is each individual working on. Awesome. Love it. Love it. All right. So I'm going to go back to see where we're at with this poll, how many people we had. So seven people actively working on it. I know we've got three people ready to present. Uh, let's actually go to it since I know we've got seven people. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bring up Akanksha on stage first. So Akanksha, you have a good amount of time. Sunisha, Swapna, everyone else, whenever you're done with it or whenever you're ready, just hop up into the queue and we will try to get as many people up on stage as possible today. All right. And there's 12 minutes left in case you were, you wanted to do with the timer, but as you can tell, we're, we're cutting the line a little bit. All right. Akanksha, can you hear us? Yes. Hello, Akanksha. What's going on? Did we just lose a conch? No, I'm here. Oh, Hi. Okay, you're cool. Hello. Yeah. How are you? Good. I'll quickly share my screen. How was the vacation, Jeff? You're seeing you after a long time. I didn't come back tan, but I think it was really white beforehand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but it was that. nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, can you see my screen? Looks yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I'll just quickly go over it. So we know the scenario. We spoke to Santiago, who's the grant manager, how the system for currently for the grant applications currently uses email spreadsheets and WiseHive for communications. And also the communication is lost in the emails. There is an approval process, but it all on the emails. And as a, pro a program grant manager, Santiago doesn't have visibility and insights uh, into different grant application status unless he goes through his emails or there are communication gaps. He doesn't have uh, ample reporting uh, metrics as well on the uh, amount of the grant that has been given to them for this quarter and how much has been already allocated for them. For that, they have to request ad hoc reports, which he mentioned in the interview. So with this Salesforce implementation, uh, what I plan to do is for the reporting metrics, uh, I, I, we want to provide a detailed report showing uh, how the grant applications, what is the grant application status, whether it's in submitted, rejected, pending approval, or approved state, which will be grouped by the count. And also a report showing the total amount uh, available for this quarter and how much has been already allocated and what is left so that they can make their financial decisions for this quarter. And there's two more, but I'll just go over one, which is, you know, how their grant reviewers are working on how many applications, like how the resources are, how well they're occupied. And the last one is the, like the grant applications characterized by the grant amount, like you just mentioned, so I add it up, uh, so that a grant manager know that, okay, um, Above 5,000, these are the grants and these are the organizations. And between 5,000 to 2,000, there are the different numbers of organizations which have requested such grants. So these are the reports. And I would just quickly show you the dashboard, which I know we said no dashboard, but I had this one handy. So a donut chart for showing the total amount and a bar chart for showing the application status of the grants and also a funnel chart for seeing how the grant reviewers have been performing and how they are closing the deal so fast, applications so fast. I think that's all. I would end it now. That's all from my side. All right. Uh, I'm, this I'm was, muted. Go for it, Brian. Uh, this was really good. If you can go back one slide. Um, so a couple of things I wrote down. Um, do, 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 where you were talking about the workload, just kind of the strain on the resources. Um, like I said, efficiency is something that, that you always want to bring up in reporting. Um, it's just yes. kind of that activity thing. It is a double-edged sword if you don't do it right. <laughs> the reason I say that, 
it's kind of it's kind of like just saying, hey, we want to move through this faster. Faster mm-hmm. is relative. <laughs> Doing more work is relative. Um, okay. So if you're going to do efficiency or talk about increasing activity, you always need a starting point. So the mm-hmm. way that I've done that in the past is, is we looked at essentially kind of the average number of meetings or the average number of opportunities that someone has in Salesforce kind of within a month or a quarter. Um, mm-hmm. And then you just want to see that number increase. So that is right. a, a good one. Um, and I'm glad you brought that up. But yeah, if okay. you're going to go that efficiency route, just kind of make sure you have a starting number. Because okay. if you go back to your stakeholder without that starting number, mm-hmm. they won't think that their people are doing more. <laughs> okay, Point noted. Yeah. Awesome. Brent, anything else that you see? Um, another one I do, I like your your statuses that you have in there. That's the exact same way I would do them. Um, one thing that I might add in here is a report. Um, there was information in the scenario about a follow-up process. So okay. follow-up and kind of requesting more information from your grant awardees is going to be something big in grant management. So maybe adding in a chart to say, hey, how many grants do we have expiring or renewing or basically how many people do we need to follow up with this month? So just kind of another idea for a chart that you could throw in there. Yes, yes. I have space for that. I'll do that. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And at the next session, of course, of course, you can continue to refine. Awesome. Awesome job. Okay. Thank you. All right, and thanks for hopping in and being the first. So we'll go ahead and bring up Sanisha. Sanisha, the floor is yours when you are ready. Okay, hi Jeff, hi Brian. It's good to see you, Brian and Jeff, after a long time. This is where I bring up my... Okay, can you see my screen? Yep, looks good. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, starting my presentation from it's my presentation title. I put streamlining grant management process for uh, key metrics and KPIs. And agenda for today is introduction, key point, grant visualization, data accuracy, satisfaction, rating, challenges, and barrier. And last is conclusion. Uh, my overview is to, to help the WH streamline their grant management processes to improve their data accuracy and key performing ind- uh, indicator aligned with their goal. This matrix will focus on increasing efficiency, reducing drawn around time, and ensuring data cleanliness. Um, I mentioned key point that number of grant requested received and processed, and next one is the grant request status and stages like internal review, approval, distribution, post distribution, and follow up a grant request and uh, how grant are managed by party member, grant utilization, data accuracy, and challenges and conclusion. Uh, I have mentioned few for part to integration. First is visualization number of grant requested. Uh, I have mentioned that line chart or bar graph will be showing the trend of the request received over the time, including filter about the status of pending, approved, rejected, and other stages. Second, for time for grant request, I have been using cause or progress bar you know, visualization this link so that we can view the how many grant has been requested from the guarantees. And next one is the grant management report team member for bar chart. I will mention for that bar chart comparing with number of grant managed by each team, mem- team member and highlighting performer and identify area of improvement. And uh, I have mentioned here Kanban for board for grant request status and uh, stages so that how does our uh, opportunity is look like if any grantee will apply and Kanban view, I think it will view clearly that our grant processes. And other is grant utilization and impact a buy chart or donor chart accelerating the percentage of grant effectively utilize their measuring impact and as well as filter to drill down by project type or their focus area. You, you can see the dashboard, how it look like if you want to buy chart or donor chart. 
And next one is for data accuracy, data quality dashboard showing the, showing the percentage of the clean and accurate data and inconsistency for data cleaning and effort. Uh, system adoption and for user satisfaction rate. Uh, I have mentioned that customer satisfaction score or NPS will be visualized the major partner satisfaction as well as qualitative analysis for feedback and comment. And the challenge and barrier, I have mentioned that limited data integration or compatibility with existing system and resistant to change among the long time user as well as adherence to standard data security and privacy requirement. And last, I have mentioned the conclusion of overall these WHO grant processes. Streamlining grant management process through Salesforce adaptation will lead to the improved efficiency, transparency, as well as partner experience. And the addressing pain points such as workload, unpredictability, poor data quality, and lack of transparency. And last will be the anticipating growth and minimizing the learning curve for the whole team. Thank you. That's that's all from my side. And that's it. <laughs> that was great. Uh, 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 Sunisha, are you in the sprint right now? Are you in the sprint right now, or did you? Are you? Are, are yeah, you just, just, you, you, you uh, are just now. Yeah, yeah, just now I completed one sprint, but okay. that was my fourth, third sprint. Awesome, good deal. All right, Brian. Uh, uh, if you can go that. back, uh, go to slide five. I think it was. Back one more. Okay. This go. one? Uh-uh. Keep going back towards the beginning. Yeah. Uh, okay. Go forward like three. One more. Right here. Okay. Um, so great presentation. I'm, I made a couple of notes. Um, okay. I like how we talked about the the grant managers per team members. We brought that up. Um, the turnaround time uh, would be kind of like that activity efficiency. And there was also a question in the chat. Um, if you if you can't get accurate numbers. Um, for kind of that turnaround time or what that activity is, you never want to fudge those numbers or kind of make them up because it will come back mm -hmm. and bite you in the butt. Um, mm -hmm. If you're not able to, I guess, kind of time someone during their work, um, ask your stakeholder, like what's a, good, what's a good turnaround time for processing a grant? Because in every, every touch point or every conversation you have with the stakeholder, it's always about getting buy-in and it's always kind of repeating back to them what they what they said um, so that you can make sure that you're in alignment at the end of the project. All right, go one slide for me. Okay, I loved how you talked about putting filters in there. That is a feature just with Salesforce reporting that a lot of people leave out. Um, I believe you can put three filters um, on an actual Salesforce dashboard, but that's a great way to do it. Um, I've seen people do it with status, like the way that you have it here. You can also do it by um, employee or you can do it by category. So great idea there. Um, on your time for grant requests, gauge charts, I like to use them. Um, this would be a good time if you kind of had that average that we talked about. But I just want to kind of bring up to the group, like you can't do that on an individual kind of grant basis. So like it would have to be for the total, the way that she calls mm -hmm. it out here. But that's also good to, because um, I think you talked about utilization earlier. Um, so that would be a good way to kind of, kind of gauge how well or how poorly an organization is tracking towards a goal. Um, you also had some reporting on, or well, some ideas about adoption. Um, there's actually a really good dashboard in the app, app exchange that's a full dashboard just for adoption. It has information on there that tracks activities. Um, it has something that's called like a wall of fame, uh, which is showing your most active Salesforce participants. Um, you can also do things like login reports. That's something that's really good to do 
when you're first implementing a Salesforce org because you want to see who's logging in and who's not logging in. Because obviously they can't do the work if they're not logging into the system. But great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank awesome. you, Brian. Yeah, Sinisha, how long did this take you to put together? Uh, I did from this morning, maybe two hours. Awesome. Awesome. Great job. Super impressive. Yeah. All right, everybody. So great job, Sinisha. Yeah, and then go ahead and bring up Swapna to the stage. And then if nobody else is going to pop up in here, we'll have a little bit of time for questions. So if you do have any questions, put them in the Q&A section. Um, otherwise, we'll segue into Brian's next experience here in a week. But Swapna, floor is yours. And if anybody's got scribble on the piece of paper, Rami, unless it's like you drew me a dragon, I don't want to see it. <laughs> Maybe I do. I don't know. Maybe it's a good dragon. Uh, right. Hi, Jeff. Perfect. Hi, Ryan. Can you see the screen? Yep. yep. Looks good. Yeah. Hi, this is Swapna here. So I just want to revise uh, what we have done in the last interview. So these are the current pain points, what we have uh, pointed out. So there is a uh, manual nature and administrative burden, which is going on. And there is a lack of real-time reporting and outdated data. Uh, and there is a delay on administrative tasks, particularly on email, uh, email corresponding and follow-ups. So the next is, these are the key data points. Uh, they want to track on number of grant requests and the turnaround and time for grant request and the grant approval rates, distribution, and after the follow up and that accuracy and completeness and workload distribution and the grant categorization and tracking. So these are the recommendations we have been uh, visualizing for those kind of uh, data points. First, the pie charts or stack vouchers can be uh, used for clear understanding of the distribution uh, for, and the workload allocation among the team members. And we can use the guard chart for satisfaction survey or feedback through aggregated scores or visual representations uh, by you, by taking the rating scales, uh, as well as the percentage of progress bar chart we can use for display the data accuracy and the completeness of the metrics. Uh, the line charts or bar charts can be used to represent the number of grant requests, turnaround time, and uh, completion of post-distribution follow-up activities. And we can use the swim lane diagrams as well for showcasing uh, in which department or in which at what stage the where the delays or inefficiencies may occur. And the last one is the, these are the challenges or bar barriers we may face while uh, implementing the Salesforce while integrating the data from various sources as uh, we can be integrating from different uh, other systems as well as accurate and uh, reliable data uh, can be a challenge as the data is being stored in different formats. Thank you. Awesome. Perfect swap. And this is exactly kind of what we were expecting to see. So, uh, Brian, you want to go ahead and give some feedback? Yep. If you can go to slide three. All right. Um, I like your recommendations here. Um, probably for that first point, I will probably lean a little bit more towards uh, pie chart here, just to kind of break those up um, and show the information and kind of give people the total at a quick view. Um, I liked how you were talking about using the gauge chart um, for your satisfaction surveys. Um, you can kind of break those up, like let's say it's on a, a five point scale. You can kind of decide one to two is bad, you know, three to four is okay, and five is in the green. So I think that yeah. would be a good as well as we can use the one. smileys as well in the feedback while, while showing and they're happier. Yep. Great job there. Um percentage or progress bar. Not sure what that chart is, the percentage or the progress bar. Um if it's just like a regular bar chart, I think that would oh this is data. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think you might have to look at that a little bit differently. Um, I would probably, to show data completeness, I would probably just do that one as a regular table. Um, so you can group by various fields in Salesforce. So like, let's say that um, there was a field in Salesforce that, that the employees were just not filling out. What you could do is you could group by that field, let's say it's called comments. People are not putting comments in there. You can group by that comments field 
And then everything that doesn't have a comment, it'll basically kind of give you a number. So that might be a good way to, to do that. Um, the line charts and bar charts is great. Uh, swim lanes, it, would that kind of be a, a, like a Kanban chart that you're thinking about there? Yes. Okay. Um, you could do that on a list view. You really don't have a, a great way to do it from a reporting standpoint. That could be another opportunity for you to use um, like a funnel chart or even a bar chart there would accomplish what you're trying to do. Okay. Um, and then go to slide two for me. Okay. Um, I like that you have in here something about the follow-up. Uh, this is also a great opportunity. Like I said, if you're, if you have an admin that you're working with, just trying to set up some type of follow-up notifications, whether it's like an email blast or something to go out about that. Um, but also kind of just using a tracker to show, hey, how many, how many renewals or how many follow-ups do you need to do uh, this month or this quarter? Yeah. And yeah, so I think this is all really good. Great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Amazing job, Swapna. Uh, so we've got a ton of questions here that I'm going to get into. And then, Brian, maybe we can just do some general kind of thoughts, feedback, how you might have approached it as well. But let's hop into the question. So we've got one from George, kind of going back to the comment of before. So when trying to compare the before values, time and money with the after, if unable to get precise data, how much do you allow yourself to fudge or guesstimate? Uh, yeah, so like I said, I, I, I don't fudge the answers um, because like I said, efficiency and activity is a great thing and people always want their, their people to be more efficient. But if you don't have numbers to back it up, it's a hard point to sell to a customer at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. All right. And Brian, you might actually go through an exercise like this and then you have to go back to the client and be like, we got to change stuff, right? Be like, either it's like process or data. I, have you ever had like a scenario like that where you're like, this isn't working. We got to, we got to fix something. You're talking about from a business process? Or yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. So we, I've run into that a few different times. So um, I guess when I was working at the bank, um, there was a way that they handled referrals. So if you ever, deal with a banker, a banker, like a bank teller might not be able to do everything that you need to do. If you want information on a mortgage, information about investments, they might not have the licenses to do that. So they would send the referrals to different departments. Um, they had to go to a third, uh, I guess, uh, another system that was not Salesforce to kind of get those referrals. Um, but then they had to track the referrals and how many referrals they were working with within Salesforce. It just didn't work. Um, salespeople are notorious for not wanting to track data, not because they're doing it maliciously. They're just busy and they're focused on selling. Um, that's their primary objective. That's how they take care of their family. So anything that takes them away from doing the thing that is important to them, um, is always a struggle. And that's, an, I guess, another kind of key point when you're thinking about KPIs and metrics, you always want to ask yourself, like, how does this benefit the salesperson? How does this benefit Santiago? Like, are, is the information I'm giving him going to make his job and his life easier? If the answer is yes, it's probably a good KPI to present. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, Love it. But in that banking example, what we had to do was go back and um, that we had an email integration with between Salesforce and Outlook. Um, so we had the bankers now start to send emails, which would create uh, events and essentially created a lead, kind of like a web to lead form uh, within the banking system. So it would create the lead for them and then we could track how many were coming from different bankers, different departments, everything like that. So we just kind of had to rework what we were doing. Awesome. Cool. Good deal. And then uh, we'll get this from Shika. So, oops, I marked it answer, didn't share it. Let's put this up here. Uh, what factors should we consider when determining the level of granularity in reporting? I love this question. How do you, how do you know how deep to go, Brian, and how do you kind of sort that out with a client? Really depends on how many metrics you have, um, how many metrics you have and 
how much space you have. Um, so on a standard Salesforce dashboard, you can only have 20 components, depending on how many, how big the group is you're working with, um, you may run out of space. I've definitely had to go back in and delete some components um, because I just kind of ran out of space. The level of granularity, uh, kind of like I talked about earlier with that progressive disclosure, from a, a chart perspective, I generally kind of start high, um, high level, and then the further down the page I go, the more detailed I get. So I may start my, my top dashboard or my top component as total revenue for the World Health Organization or total grants outstanding. And then the further you move down the page, I may see, okay, how many I have in the stage? How many, what's the workload? And then you just get more granular as you go. If you're showing a lot of information, then you um, you can also just kind of click into the actual report and get more granular into that report. Myself personally, I don't typically like tables in a dashboard. I just feel like it's a waste of space and a, a waste of a dashboard component. Um, so I, I tend to stick away from inserting a table component um, onto a dashboard. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, and Brian, you didn't see it in the comments, but she was like, I know this answer is going to be it's Ben. So love that. We're going to start there. <laughs> uh, all right. So we've got a couple more. Uh, so here, and the answer for here is we're going to go probably somewhere similar. Should we be suggesting the dashboards on app change to the user or rely on Salesforce features while giving this presentation, we'll say to the client, Brian. It depends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, adoption. Uh, generally what I do with with dashboards, so there are some that are on the app exchange. Like I said, the adoption one is is one that I recommend. Um, but it doesn't mean that you have to keep everything on that dashboard. Like if you have the ability to clone a dashboard and essentially kind of add things and take it out. So there are some charts and some reports in the adoption dashboard that I don't really like. So I'll use it as a starting point. And the app exchange is a great time saver because like let's say um, adoption was one of the things that Santiago wanted to work on and that'll help a lot with the data portion of it. You could download that, that dashboard. I mean, yes, download the dashboard from the app exchange, show it to Santiago, get his feedback. Hey, is there anything on here that you like? Or when you think about adoption, what's missing from this screen? That's the question I always ask. Um, what's missing from this and let them tell you like, hey, I like that I can see who's logging in, but I wish I would be able to see, um, you know, how many, how many comments they're leaving on a case before they close it or how many, how many meetings are they having before a grant is approved. That's something that's not in the standard dashboard but now I have that feedback and I don't have to create the whole thing from scratch. So it's a great time saver. Awesome. Love it. And then there's one more question from Melissa. I love this question. Uh, can you suggest ways to respond to the request, improving data cleanliness for informed decisions? And I think that the last piece of this is like, what is an example of bad data? I just, this is kind of like a spider web of answers, but Brian, do you want to give your, your take on it? Sure. Um, <laughs> I just had this conversation. <laughs> uh, so first part of your question. Um, this data cleanliness is something that you always have to think about. And kind of like how I talked about in my introduction, <clears throat> this is where you make a name for yourself. That question really kind of sums it up because when you're in there as a BA, when you're in there as a product manager, project manager, nobody's asking that question. Nobody's asking you, okay, with everything that you told us, what do we need to report on? Because that's going to determine how you put together your page layouts. What type of fields are you going to use? You know, some people love to use validation rules. I absolutely hate validation rules because there's no way to govern what somebody puts in there. I've worked at the bank and at NBC and people have validation rules and people figure out how to get around it. So like if you say, for example, 
you have to put in a reason why your opportunity was lost. If you try to close an opportunity without putting a reason that it's lost, you'll get this lovely little error message and you won't be able to close it. Eventually, your salespeople are going to understand that, hey, I can just go in there and type one, two, three, and now I can save my opportunity and you have no data that helps anybody. So like I said, that's a real important question to ask because people aren't asking it. Um, and then I guess that would be probably my best example uh, because people, people like to look at, well, why aren't we winning enough opportunities? Is our price too high or do we not have enough offerings? You know, why are we not winning these opportunities? And if, if your salespeople aren't filling it out, then you don't have the data to make actionable, informed decisions on. Awesome. Great. And everyone, I did post a link for feedback. We always love feedback. It helps us prepare. We've got questions continue to pop in. I love this. A ton of great questions to close out the session. So here's one from Bim Kuba. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, Santiago mentioned that he wants to be able to analyze trends or see patterns of grant requests in the future. Is there a dashboard component or a way that you would think about helping there, Brian? Um, I would say to analyze trends, what you could do, um, I would say because it's grants, I would probably run it through the opportunity. Well, for simple purposes, we'll run it through the opportunity object. <laughs> um, but there's ways that you can group together the data by the dates. So let's say that you're going by the close date. Um, you could group that and look at it from a quarterly basis and say, hey, compared to Q1, how much business do we have? Um, Jeff and I were talking about earlier, biz businesses have seasonality. So there are going to be certain times of the year where you're busier than when you're not. Um, that's really good, especially if you work in a, like a call center environment. It's important to know what your business trends are because it helps with staffing um, and just helps with a lot of different support, I guess, uh, aspects. It's just knowing the seasonality of it. Um, so I would probably do like a quarter over quarter. And also another good one to do is where are we, let's say we have a, a goal to distribute $10 million in a year. How well are we pacing towards that $10 million? If we look at June, I guess, June of this year compared to June of last year, are we ahead of schedule? Are we below schedule? What's going on? Awesome. Cool, cool. And then last one to close this down. This one's a little bit nuanced. Brian, what's the difference between the term CRM analytics and reports and dashboards? CRM analytics has been called a lot of different things but essentially it's Tableau. Um, the primary, primary difference between reports and dashboards, which is the standard kind of Salesforce reporting, which you saw some of your cohort members do, and CRM analytics is with CRM analytics, you can bring in data from different places. So let's say, for example, um, the World Healthcare Organization is, they have a, a RFP system or they have uh, some other system that they need to pull data from. That's when you would use CRM analytics because with Salesforce reporting, you can only report on what's in Salesforce. You also get some other little charts. Well, not little, but you can also get some some different charts, um, add a lot more filters, and you just have more functionality and flexibility when creating reports and dashboards with CRM analytics. But if, if awesome. all the data is in Salesforce, just stick with reports and dashboards. Awesome, cool, cool. And I guess we got time for one more, Brian, if it's if it's relevant to you. Are you guys integrating AI into your practice or is it part of your data day to day job yet? Um, if this is about my current work at NBC, yeah, uh, yeah not really. Um, we're we're having some conversations about it. Um, NBC has a very strong partnership with Salesforce. Um, so there have been some conversations about it, but I think we're still trying to figure out how to work with it because working with a large enterprise organization, um, cybersecurity is top of mind for everybody. And because we're, we're working with private information, you want to make sure that it doesn't get out. And not all AI kind of has the, the regulations around it that the company is comfortable with. 
Yep, totally fair. Small companies, big companies are going to certainly have different approaches here uh, with this. We have this conversation all the time. Brian, thank you a ton. And learners, thank you for sharing your work and all of those amazing questions that we're able to get through this. Appreciate everyone giving feedback, posting the link here. Again, if you've got some time, it always helps us continue to improve. And everyone, head to the emojis. Thank you, Brian, again, for taking some time out of your day and away from the family. Sometimes maybe a little bit of a break from the little ones in the family. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, everyone, again, appreciate it. Great job, Brian. Thank you again. We'll see you all at the next one. Take care. See you all later. Bye, everybody. Bye.